Hey folks, I've had some people asking about my work setup at home. I've got my Mac from work and my personal laptop running Linux over there. I've got a couple of screens set up, but I've also got this auto prompter. One of the issues that I've had with this though is unlike on Linux, where a simple command line will allow me to flip the image uh, that, that gets displayed out of the monitor here, um, the, the Mac doesn't have any kind of way of doing that. There's no third party software. There's no functionality within uh, Mac OS to flip the image, which means if we come in a bit closer here, you can see that the image in there is actually still flipped and I can't really read what's going on. So what I use this for is mostly for Zoom sessions nowadays actually, but it's, um, it's very useful for online presentations, uh, being able to see what's on the screen while also talking directly into the camera. So we've got a little screen in down there and that reflects off a two-way glass. And behind there is usually the camera that I'm talking to at the moment. Um, that camera can see through the screen. It can see me, but I can see the reflection of the screen. Therefore, I don't need to kind of look off screen to, um, to refer to what I'm talking about. It's also really nice for Zoom sessions because I can look right into your soul while I'm talking to you. One thing that I found after doing some research and, and trying to work out if I could get one of these monitors that had a built-in horizontal flip, um, most monitors nowadays don't. And then somebody suggested to me looking at field monitors. So field monitors, unlike standard computer type displays, are monitors that are used in um, recording productions where they'll have cameras uh, on, on dollies and whatever and the, the, um, the director or, or whoever will want to see what the cameras can see. They're monitors for use in the field while recording. These have a bit more functionality in them. Uh, I haven't looked into all the functionality of this one. It's got things like uh, focus assist and, and, and things like that. Um, I don't think it's called focus assist, but you get these little zebra stripes that help you work out what's in focus. But this one has horizontal flip. So I'm gonna open this up, replace this monitor, and hopefully from now on, I won't be reading things backwards while talking to people. Uh, let's see how this goes. All right, I've got a couple of packages here. I don't actually know what uh, LED control is. Mm. Bought some LED strip LEDs probably about two years ago. Had a controller. <laughs> it was the wrong controller. So I've got a couple of these Wi Fi LED controllers. Going to focus. Like that. There we go. Five pin. The other one I got was six pin. Um, so this is RGBW and ground. The other one I had was RGBWW ground, which I think allows you to change the the warmth of the white or something. I don't know. Anyway, so I have three three spools of that. I now have three controllers. Another video coming up. Just going to see whether I can control these from Tasmota or something. Um, and then the idea, hopefully, is at the moment I've got these um, two LifeX bulbs. I want to stick some LED panels, any LED strips under there. One day, get around to it. What else do I have? HDMI cables. This is for another project. And somewhat embarrassingly, for that same project, I knew I needed somewhere between six and 10 HDMI cables. So I bought a 10 pack for $27 which I think is arriving tomorrow. So I now have 16 HDMI cables. I think I'm going to be okay for a while. This is also not the monitor. We'll get to the monitor. Obviously it must be the last box. It's always the last box you look in, eh? Sharp knives. I love them. Don't you just hate how big the boxes are though? I know why they do it. It's easy to stack them and tessellate and packaging, but the amount of It's a NPFW50 camera ba or bat. It's supposed to be a charger. It's actually smaller than I was expecting. Um, it's a charger for batteries and two extra batteries for this camera. Um, I've had the Sony A6400 for about a month, not even a month, I think now. And at the end of this month, my wife and I are going into the city and gonna go on a bit of a photo shoot. And I thought it'd be nice to have more than just one battery and the ability to charge the battery while it's not in the camera. So I bought an aftermarket because uh, I don't know, let me know in the comments, do you buy aftermarket or official camera batteries? I've never had a problem with the aftermarket stuff um, and it makes me wonder who buys the the originals. So do you prefer the original to the aftermarket? Let me know. 
And if so, why? What experience have you had? Niwa, good, good brand in my opinion. Um, the lights that I have up here are newer branded. A few other things probably. So, oh my God, look at this, this is so tiny. This is, this is smaller than my hand. I mean, there's no reason it's so light as well. There's no reason why it should be any bigger, but I'm just used to chargers being big and bulky. Couple of batteries. And a USB cable, micro USB, it's nice. So now I can charge those. Uh, I'll do that later. Well, paper, 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 cardboard. So with the exception of these, which apparently, there you go, recycling number two. Um, we we have soft soft plastic recycling op options, but you know, I don't know why things still get wrapped individually in plastic. It's annoying. Not as annoying as these though. Amazon, if you're watching, why would you be? But if you are, if you work for Amazon and you have any control at all over the packaging you use, recycling these things you can do if the bubble stuff on the inside is the same material as the outside. So you can get plastic ones that have plastic bubbles on the inside, they can be recycled. You can get paper ones with paper bubbles, they're probably more expensive, they're like the eco-friendly option. This is plastic on the inside and paper on the outside, which means I can't recycle this. Amazon, the amount of stuff that you post out, the number of people who will throw these out and it just goes into landfill, not cool. Sort it out. Paper, cardboard, recycles, job done. All right, the bit we've all been waiting for. I don't, I don't have a singing voice. I, I preferred the car, the, the scrumpled paper. Amazon, I preferred the scrumpled paper. More plastic, don't do it. All right, the broadcast monitor is 4K. It's made by Lilliput. So this is a broadcast monitor as opposed to a standard computer type monitor. And the other advantage is, is that it has lots of uh, quarter 20 screw mounts. So let's open this up and see what we have. All right, nice bit of padding to protect the screen. Again, more plastic. More plastic. Oops, it's falling out all over the place. Nice little uh, strap here to pull the bottom off. We'll get to that in a second. This is, this is the monitor. Oh, it's got a frame around it, a casing of some sort. Um, so we have this frame, which I presume clips off, just got a couple of clips on the side here. Clips off this way. Let's just take that off so we can see what it looks like underneath. How does this slide off? There we go, slides off. There's a protective screen on here. Nice little convenient peel point over in the corner here. I'll leave that on for now, just while we're playing with it. Um, but this fits on top. And there's Velcro on the inside here. So I'm looking forward to seeing what goes on there. A bit of a hood, I imagine. And what do we have? So we've got our menu scroll wheel. The other thing I like about this, the other one that I've got over on the other side there, this monitor here has the buttons over on the side, which makes it actually quite awkward to get into to change the settings. So that's the bottom of the screen here. So they're on the right hand side, which if you're using a monitor normally, that's fine. You go up to a monitor and you, you hit the buttons on the right hand side. Sure, I'm, I'm fine with that. Um, it would be so much easier though, if the buttons were along the top edge here. Let's have a look at this one over here. So we have the bottom of the monitor here, and the buttons along the top edge here. Isn't that wonderful? So we've got a menu scroll wheel, we've got an exit button, F1, F2, and power and input switch. I believe that F1 and F2 are programmable switches that we can get it to do things. So I could, for example, program F2 or F1 to be horizontal flip. I look forward to trying that out. All right, what else do we have in the box? Let's pull our magic little, how oh, sweet. All right, we have an instruction manual. Anything exciting? Probably not. 
That's the other thing I like about this monitor is, and quite important for a monitor that you're going to use in a, an auto queue, is it's going to be sitting flat down. So you want your input connectors on the bottom, not on the back. Some monitors still have the, the inputs on the back. Sometimes even the power can be on the back. This has no uh, inputs on the back at all. It does have VESA mount though. Uh, I think it's 75 mil. Looks more like 75 mil rather than the 100 mil VESA. But you could mount this onto uh, an arm or a bracket of some sort. You could also, I could use the HDMI in on this, HDMI out from that camera, and mount this onto a tripod somehow using the quarter 20 um, sockets here. And you'll notice there's one on the bottom, one on the side, one on the top, and one on this side. So you can literally mount it any which way you need um, to work for you. All right, other things we've got. Uh, this, this is awesome. So there is this DC in here, and there is a power, there is this power plug. So that's good for when I'm at home. Out and about though, is this unit here. So this will take, uses the battery, Sony DV type batteries. Which of these do I recognize the name of? There's almost a, a, a pseudo industry standard type of battery that fit my lights and a few other things, and they'll fit onto this bracket here, um, which you can mount onto the VESA ports here, some which way around, and then that can plug in, and then this becomes totally mobile because you can plug your battery in. Another HDMI cable, <clears throat> but this goes to mini HDMI. That's nice. Um, then this thing here is basically a little articulated. So the, I've got a cold shoe mount here. You can see on this camera here, I've got a, um, a cage. I've got a cage and I've got a, uh, some cold shoe mounts on the side so I can clip a microphone on here and a light over there. Um, I could now use this cold shoe mount, attach it to the side of the camera and then I'm going to attach that to the bottom. And then we'll mount this, because I think that should clear the top there. We'll mount this at right angles. Now in your case, your camera might have uh, the hot shoe on the top already. In fact, mine has, I could actually just have used that. Um, but let's plug this into the hot shoe. The gap right in there is so narrow that it doesn't fit onto the cold shoe mount on the, the cage. So let's see whether I can attach this onto the camera itself. How's that for a, a selfie screen? That's uh, pretty impressive, right? I'm just being silly now. Let's get back to the point of this video. The last few bits is a, a hex screw and uh, Allen key for something. Ah, this will be the shade. So it's a, um, it's a plastic, sturdy, bendable, looks uh, pretty rugged. It's got a felt inner. So if we come back, let's grab our frame again. So this frame would clip onto the monitor, like so. And then this will come in to here and attach around the Velcro. So now there's this nice sun visor shade and uh, the inside there being matte, there's not any shininess to this. So it won't reflect on this. That's going to give you a nice clear view. Um, again, not something I'm going to need indoors. So I'll take that off again. Of all the things, the monitor and the power is really the only thing that I want. So let's come over to the other side and uh, install this thing. All right. so take the hood off so I've got access to all the cables and everything. At the moment I've got a little bit of blue tech under here holding it in place because um, this was sliding around a bit. So I'll just peel this off. There's a power connector just there and HDMI on this side. The current lily put is powered by this block here which has an output of 12 volts and 5 amps. So as I look it's positive pin so as long as the other one's the same um, I can use this one. So if we look at this one here, we can see that the pin is also positive uh, and the outside is negative. So we're good to go. So the power is on the same side of the monitor. That's very convenient. 
um, and this one also has an HDMI in. Uh, it also comes with an HDMI out, which is uh, great, again, for recording situations where you want to monitor something and have the HDMI pass straight through into your um, actual recording device. Let's power this thing up. Green lights come on, that's good. Eh, hey, field monitor. Lovely, so I'll just wake up my Mac again. All right, we've got a little histogram over there and there's an audio level as well for, obviously there's audio going in, we don't. Um, so I've just pressed on the menu button. So the menu scroll is actually a button and we can go down and what do we have here? We've got brightness, contrast, saturation, tint, sharpness and color temperature. So let's come down. So we've got the marker, scan aspect, display scan, check field, freeze, DSLR, peaking, peaking color, peaking level, false color, exposure, exposure level, histogram, audio volume, language on screen display timer, image flip. That's the one we want. So we do image flip on. Oh, it's got multiple different flips. There we go. So that's the way you want it. <laughs> I can read it now. And I'm going to change the F1 configuration to B flip. Let's see if I can find that. Image flip. And now what I want to do is let's come back and we want to disable the histogram. Let's come in here and turn that off. Uh, probably volume metal. There we go. Level meter off. Let's exit out. And now we have uh, the actual image down there flipped. And now when it comes across in the, uh, the reflection, it's the right way around, which means secondly, I can use this monitor for something completely different. I want to be able to use these two monitors and the auto cue both on my work laptop and on my personal laptop. The monitors have two HDMI inputs each, so I could have a toggle on those and then flip one monitor between the um, the Linux machine and the Mac machine for both of those. The hard part is flipping this one here. This only has one HDMI input. I could do a splitter type thing like I'm currently doing still, but I have another idea for setting all of this up. That'll be in another video coming. The other thing I want to be able to do is to share the camera, this camera, once it's plugged in there, the HDMI out between both laptops. If there's anything you, you want me to go over in this setup, uh, let me know. I'm happy to talk about everything I've done in this room. Uh, let me know what's most interest to you and uh, what kind of issues you're facing if you're setting up a, a home video streaming whatever studio. Thanks for tuning in. See ya. So that'll be coming up in another video, how to switch uh, multiple inputs and outputs to um, make working with two laptops at home with a recording setup really easy to do. And that was really well spoken. Spoken?